Mr. Luke's. I'm almost out, but this is my milk of choice. And then I put some of this in there. Who knows? But I just tell myself that it helps with not spiking my cortisol. Okay, I got distracted earlier because I got a knock on my door and then never picked up the camera back again until now it's 3 p.m. and I'm about to record a Q&A with Meadow for our podcast. Hot my very pod. Check us out. I am feeling cute today, which I'm happy about because I've kind of felt like ass the last couple of weeks. I'm not gonna lie to you. So glad I'm feeling better in that department. Also, this new lip combo that I'm doing, I'm really thrilled with. It's the Exa pencil in, and then I just dabbed Summer Friday's third cheek and lip stain, which I have a little bit on my cheeks right now too, in Heat Wave, dab that in the middle. And then a little either gloss or I'm just using my Rode lip peptide, whatever the fuck it's called. On top, also I'm winded because I just went up and down like 75 times because I kept forgetting shit in my bedroom that I needed for the podcast. But yeah, today is Monday. Happy Monday, if you're watching it on a Monday. And today's just been a good day so far. Been a catch up day for email, but I've really been plowing through my to-do list, which makes me happy. And we had a great team meeting, which is always fun to start a Monday that way with the TMV team, which is just so in flow right now which makes me really happy and that's always a really good feeling like when you just feel like your ducks are in a row and everyone is executing the way they need to be and all cylinders are sort of firing well speaking of cylinders not firing my car is still not done but i finally got a loner which thank god <laughs> because it's now been like 10 days without a car. I was complaining about it the other day and so it was like, oh sweetie, you've never had real issues with your car, have you? And I was like, no. Then he was like, yep, yeah, got it, got it, got it, got it. Apparently this happens all the time and I've just been really lucky and blessed that shit just hasn't happened to my car before, like for this long of a period of time. Okay, Meadow's joining. So I'm gonna say hi. Say hi to the vlog. <laughs> they can't hear you. Just finished recording another tmv episode we did a q a that was fun i made a tiktok today stitching the conversation that becky g just had on jay shetty's podcast and it is a conversation that i have in my head all of the time and i'm clearly not alone in these thoughts and i honestly don't even know if i've talked about it on this channel maybe i have but it's that conversation of ni de aquí ni de allá not from here not from there and it is something that i resonate with so much and i feel like any child of immigrants grandchild great grandchild of immigrants can identify with i grew up in Miami both of my parents were born in Cuba and this was a sentiment that I felt a ton growing up while I heard this narrative come from the older generation well let me just talk first about like the you're not Latino enough sentiment in general coming from and hearing that from fellow fellow <laughs> and hearing that from fellow Latinos I would hear that all of the time particularly from peers my own age especially the ones that spoke better Spanish than I did and and that is not even like peeking the curtain into the conversation of the ones who were not Caribbean Latin and this is not a dig at all but like a lot of the kids that I grew up with that were not Caribbean Latins like I was because my family was Cuban because my mom's side of the family grew up in Puerto Rico just based off of that and the accents that come from those places we were already seen as trash and as less than just from like that elitist perspective and I saw this a lot growing up because my mom's side of the family when they left cuba they went to puerto rico and my dad's side of the family is in ecuador and those two cultures just puerto rican versus ecuadorian are extremely different so i saw a lot of that dynamic growing up i saw a lot of feeling like you absolutely had to assimilate and that is not my parents fault that is the society that they were living in the society that we still live in and it was just amplified by a thousand it was sink or swim ten hundred percent for my parents and a assimilating and getting rid of your accent was like what you needed to do so i grew up already with that in my head of not only is your spanish not perfect and now you're not latina enough for that because of that sorry
sorry but also because you're cuban and because that's the accent that you speak in and because you'll like pick up on a puerto rican accent your spanish is not trash so i'm hearing that perspective all the time of just like you're not latina enough period and i'm like what the fuck do you want me to do like i can't control where i'm born i don't feel fully american and i don't feel fully cuban because i don't understand that experience i've never lived there i still haven't even been there which is like a whole other conversation but i do still have that giant piece of myself that feels like i have no clue where i came from because i've never been to that country i've never been there and i grew up 90 miles away it honestly wasn't until i left school i was living in new york and i was in my early 20s and i so badly wanted to reconnect with my roots and that's like a whole other conversation because obviously i grew up with a bunch of cubans around me in miami but just like i was really craving and like i could really get into this another day if you guys are interested in this conversation but like i think i, I just grew up around a lot of like catholic people and a lot of like it was just like a big like tienes que ser like la niña fina and i was just not i like never identified with that and i just was trying to reconnect with like the fun like light-hearted love within the caribbean latin heritage and it wasn't until like i met those friends who are still friends of mine now who were the first people to tell me like hello like of course your spanish isn't perfect like you fucking grew up in america a and b like whoever tells you that fuck off it's great that you're trying to stay connected with where your family's from and with your ancestors don't let anybody shame you into thinking they're better than you or you're less than because your spanish isn't perfect and that conversation of just the language is just one piece of this not latin enough not american enough conversation and i know it's just like something that a lot of people relate to and i just don't understand why the narrative is nothing other than celebrating and making those people who are in that in between feel so excited and thrilled about getting the opportunity to live in the gray because living in the gray is so fucking beautiful and that's such what a unique experience and what a special experience and even though it is unique in its own way it also is not unique at all because i know that there's people that are going to be watching this that feel me 110 percent and that is why i think that these conversations are important and like i'm just scratching the surface with this but i know it's a conversation that i've had a whole lot in my head and it just like doesn't make sense to me where i'm like how are you shitting on me like one group of people is shitting on me for like not being born in the country that my parents were born in, and then then like the other half is like shitting on me for like being born here like it just like it doesn't it doesn't make sense <laughs> Obviously, this is not exclusive to Latin Hispanic culture whatsoever. So yeah, if you feel any similarly to I do, I feel you, you're not alone. And I am just really happy that the conversation like Becky and Jay's is happening. And it is so, it is so valuable. It's so important to have. I feel like I didn't articulate any of that properly, but I'm tired. I've been talking all day. So I think I need to put away the camera and go to the gym because at the end of the day, and my brain is a little bit fried. We're gonna go, we're gonna go work out, I think. Oh my God. I'm so tired, you guys, like so freaking tired. I, I know I'm gonna get my period like any day now, any day now, this bitch is gonna fucking arrive and just fuck shit up for me. Maybe I'll sit on the ground. I've been trying so hard to get work done today. And to be fair, I actually tackled some writing this morning that I'm really excited about. And can't wait to share with you all what I'm working on that has to do with writing. There's only so many things. So if you can guess, it's not a book yet, but it is something that I've been thinking about for a long time. And some of you have asked for, and some have not. And yeah, I've been scared to do it for a minute just because of like, A, is it gonna be good? Is anyone gonna care? And then B, like the responsibility that comes with it and just like tacking on another thing onto my plate makes me a little bit nervy, but that's fine. I'll talk about it in more detail like when I actually can and like feel like I can share and not be like weird and private. And now it's like 3 p.m. and I can't get a damn thing done. Like I can't get a damn thing done. I don't wanna have another coffee. I mean, maybe I will, let's be real. Maybe I will make another coffee. I feel like I need to get outside. I just sat on my balcony for like 15 minutes with my eyes just like closed, just like thinking and meditating. So I think that's also probably contributing to why I feel fucking exhausted. And then I was like, maybe I'll just go take a walk. But then I have that like weird, like freelancer guilt of like, you should be working, but I'm not getting anything done because I'm just staring at my computer. So I think what I may do, if it's still open, is walk to the new coffee shop that's in my neighborhood. It's really yummy. Even though I have a perfectly great espresso machine right there, I feel like I need to get up and out for like a hot second even though it's gonna take me like 10 minutes the entire ordeal and then great news car is finally ready i can go 
pick it up later today at like 5 15 he told me to come by so thank god because it's about time although i will say i did finally get a rental and or not a rental what's it called um a loaner which like amazing thank god i got a loaner like a week in and it's been so fun driving that loaner around i will say even though i'm not used to sedans anymore it's such like it's a, it's a fast car <laughs> the loaner that they gave me so it's been fun to drive and yeah sometimes it's fun to like have a have a loaner that you get to drive around and feel like you're somebody else i don't know the car really reminds me of my mom growing up because she always had like that type of sedan and she reminds me of her what do you guys do when you're in the middle of a work day and are really fucking tired and need to keep on keeping on? Cause like whenever I get down, not down, whenever I get in this like just really fucking tired mood where it's like gloomy outside and it's just like hard to do anything. I have this weird freelancer guilt that like if I'm not constantly working, which I've talked about like a lot on the podcast that like I'm not being productive. But right now, especially right now, a lot of the projects that I'm working on, I need like my creative brain to be working and I need to be able to like move through things with clarity and like, what's it called? Like <laughs> my brain functioning. So I'm like, maybe that 10 minute walk is the thing that I need to do right now. And that is what I used to do. Like when I was working in an office, even though I like had to be at my desk all the time cause I was an assistant, whenever my boss was like in a meeting or something and like I knew she was gonna be like away for like an hour and I could like step out for a second, I would take like a 10 minute lap with one of my coworkers like downstairs. We would like walk outside for a little bit and like just get outside for a sec. Or I would just like get up and walk to the kitchen and like talk shit with one of my coworkers for a little bit. Like whatever it was, I would like allow myself that grace. But I think that because I'm home by myself or even when I'm out like working at a coffee shop, I still feel like I, like I don't give myself those breaks. So then I like feel guilty when I'm just not working consecutively. But then I'm like, even when you were in an office, you weren't working consecutively. Like you were taking breaks every now and again, even if it was like a 10 minute thing or like a five minute thing or whatever, just to have like human interaction. I've been giving myself a lot more grace with this and I've been really, yeah, there's nothing else to say other than that. I've just been giving myself a lot more grace in this department. And I hope that if anyone listening feels the same way, that you're giving yourself a little bit of grace in that department too. So I think what I'm gonna do is go take that walk real quick come back and then just like see if i can start checking things off the list again and we'll keep it pushing literally the second that i turned the camera off i was like i gotta pee guess who arrived miss girl miss girl arrived so scratch the second coffee idea probably should still take a walk but we're not gonna do that because now we have the excuse i'm getting really fucking creative look what you're standing on right now i just put this on top of this and put you on top of there so immediately scratched that idea of going to get coffee i'm gonna make myself a tea i'm doing a ginger spearmint combo big combo girl when it comes to like anything with ginger and i'm gonna plop myself on the couch for a little bit because this luteal phase was rough i can't remember if i talked about this already on the vlog but like it's been a long one and I'm just tired. I've really made the commitment to like try and move my body more and be more consistent with working out just to like have it just be like a sustainable part of my life, which is a whole other conversation. But I've been like walking more and just like doing workouts. And the other day I was at the gym and I was telling Zoe, I was like, it felt like each one of my limbs weighed a thousand pounds. Like every exercise was so strenuous and like tiring. And it wasn't even like, oh, I'm out of shape. Like it doesn't feel good. Cause I know what that feels like. Or not that it doesn't feel good, but like, I'm just weak. Like that wasn't the feeling. It was genuinely like, oh, I'm sorry. Like do my, do my whims, do my limbs each way, like a thousand tons. Like what? Is going on here but yeah obviously we knew that miss period was coming um i do need to go run out though and buy things because i just checked my bathroom and have run out of like every tampon every pad every liner is nowhere to be found so days one and two of my period if i wasn't already like a fucking little taurus princess i turn into an even bigger princess usually tomorrow is the day that i will be in excruciating pain fingers crossed We've been good with our magnesium lately, but yeah, I'm like, mm, I can't, mm, no. Let me Uber Eats toilet paper and tampons. Mm -hmm. 